This is part 3 of my videos on how to answer a pathology exam viva and we are now discussing the gross specimens. Coming to the next specimen which is kept of a specimen of uterus. What you find here is that the uterus shows trabeculations. What are trabeculations? You can find out they are fine lines here, coarse lines in fact just seen all, all around the uterine wall okay? and the uterus does appear to be enlarged. So this is called as trabeculations and this is a feature of adenomyosis. So numerous small cysts in the enlarged and globular uterus. There is myometal hypertrophy and trabecular smooth muscles which cannot be shelled out. Next specimen is of a uterus with a fungating mass in the lower end of the uterus. This is a specimen of carcinoma of cervix. All right. So, specimen of hysterectomy with cut surface showing a grayish ulceroproliferative growth measuring, you have to give the measurement involving both lips of the cervix extending into the isthmus. What is the isthmus? If you imagine this is the uterus, this is the endometrial cavity, cervix, this part in between the uterus and the cervix is called the isthmus. So, this growth is extending upwards into the isthmus. How does it spread? It spreads via direct extension into the vagina uterus, parametrium, lower urinary tract, uterosacral ligaments, distant metastasis to the aortic and mediastinal lymph nodes, lungs, bone and ovary. Another specimen here of the uterus showing a ulceroproliferative growth, grey-white lesion in the endometrium, around the endometrium. This is a carcinoma of the endometrium. So, cut surface shows a tumor mass protruding into the endometrial cavity having irregular friable grey tan appearance extending up to the cervical canal and uterus may be large if there is myometrial invasion. Again you have to prepare the questions for it. They can ask you the etiopathogenesis of carcinoma of endometrium like estrogen stimulation, endometrial hyperplasia is a risk factor. They may ask you to classify the hyperplasias. It can be uh, atypical and typical hyperplasias or the classification of endometrium carcinomas or microscopy type 1 and type 2. So, these are the kind of questions you have to prepare for your viva. Next and most common specimen kept in any exam is a fibroid uterus. So, on gross fibroid uteruses tend to have a white world appearance. They are circumscribed lesions and depending on the location, they can be submucosal if they are just beneath the endometrium, subserosal if they are just beneath the serosa or if they are in between into the wall they are called as intramural fibroids. This is a pedunculated fibroid arising with a peduncle here. right? So, these are the very common specimens asked and the examiner can ask you what are the secondary changes in fibroid. It can have a red degeneration, hydropic change, it can go for hyaline change, mixoid change. right? These are the kind of questions examiner can ask you with calcification it can undergo. You can also have a specimen of ovarian cyst. Then you have to describe the differences between a uh, serous cyst adenoma and a mucinous cyst adenoma on gross. So, usually serous cyst adenomas tend to be unilocular, mucinous cyst adenomas tend to be multilocular. The contents of a serous cyst adenoma is watery, whereas a mucinous cyst adenoma tends to be mucoid fluid. Thirdly, you have to look for uh, on the gross for papillary excrescences when you are examining a specimen of ovary. right? So, you, what you have here is a unilocular cyst filled with clear pale yellow cystic fluid. Inner wall of the cyst is smooth. Papillary tumor tend to have papillary projections on the outer surface or protruding into the cystic cavity. Another specimen here of the breast that is also very commonly kept. You have a breast mastectomy specimen with a nipple and the nipple here, elliptical piece of skin with the nipple areola. On cut surface, you have an infiltrating tumor, which is gray white. So, again, the questions asked to you will be what are the prognostic factors for carcinoma of breast? So, that is very important, right? Please read that. What are the different prognostic factors right from the gross to the microscopy? Most important being the lymph node involvement, then the status of the estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, status of the margins. Okay. So, please read that up. 
another specimen of the breast. This is a lumpectomy specimen of a circumscribed lesion which is grey white rubbery with slit like spaces. This is a specimen of fibrodenoma. This is a benign tumor of the breast, also called as the mouth in breast. Sorry, mouse in the breast. And then we have a specimen of penis with the foreskin over here and also a proliferative growth. This is nothing but the specimen of carcinoma of penis. Sometimes it can be kept. Not very common, but it can be kept. You can also be asked a specimen of the bone. Bone tumors are very commonly kept. And then whenever you have a bone tumor, you have to remember, you have to describe the tumor in terms of its location, where the tumor arises. Please remember, important bone tumors are osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, chondrosarcoma and osteoclastoma from the exam point of view. Alright. And osteosarcoma arises from the metaphysis. Giant cell tumor is from the epiphysis. Chondrosarcoma is from the diaphysis. Ewing sarcoma is from the diaphysis. Okay, at least these four tumors you have to remember. And then you start, start describing it. Uh, what you find here is a tumor involving the metaphysis. It is infiltrating into the adjacent tissue and it is lifting the periosteum. Right? So, a bulky, gritty, hemorrhagic tumor with cystic degeneration arising in the metaphysis, spreads with the medullary cavity, destroys the cortical bone, elevates the periosteum and invades the soft tissue, rarely penetrates joints along the tendons and ligaments. Here is a specimen of thyroid. So, this is the thyroid gland. What you find here is multinodular lesions here with the glistening areas. These glistening areas are the normal areas. Right, you can also have hemorrhage here. This is a simple colloid goiter, right, with lot of nodulars and cystic spaces, right. So specimen of thyroid is asymmetric, nodular, large, cut surface is cystic, hemorrhagic, with brown gelatinous colloid nodules with focal calcification, variable size, capsule usually intact, small and bumpy. The question other examiner can ask you is what are the stages in development of a goiter? It is a simple goiter, then it becomes a multinodular goiter. Okay. A specimen of thyroid, not a very good specimen actually. But yeah, with a classical appearance for a papillary cast of thyroid should be a cystic lesion with granular excrescences. Now with this papillary excrescences on gross, we will always say they are granular appearance, right? So, the appearance can be solid, white, firm, multifocal, infiltrative. It can have variable cysts, fibrosis calcification with a granular appearance. Remember, papillary carcinoma of thyroid tend to have the first presentation of a papillary carcinoma of thyroid will be as sometimes as a lateral aberrant thyroid. What is this lateral aberrant thyroid? It is nothing but they will metastasize. So, when you actually aspirate or do FNAC, it will turn out to be a cystic metastasis of the lymph node. That's why it's called as a lateral aberrant thyroid. Then we have another large specimen of enlarged spleen. This is a CVC spleen or chronic venous congestion of spleen. Right? The examiner can ask you what are the causes of chronic venous congestion and how does it happen. So the venous congestion of the systemic organs is because of which failure? Of the right heart failure. Right, whereas the left heart failure leads to CVC lung. So, this is not a very exhaustive list, there are many more specimens which you can add. But my idea was to just give you a general outline of how to approach a viva. All right, most importantly, whenever you're going for a viva, uh, apart from the specimens, please remember to read your question papers. All right, your theory question papers are very important. Sometimes the examiners will tend to ask the same questions from your theory exam paper. That is one more tip I would like to give each and every student. Alright. And go with a bit of humility. Always when you are approaching a viva, the examiner, uh, sometimes some examiners have a bit of uh, ego. Not all, a very few of the examiners. So better to always be humble. And if the examiner is sometimes wrong, do not argue. Okay. That set, set up, sets a very bad precedent. Just respect the examiner. They are also senior people. And go about with humility. Most of the examiners will appreciate that. Alright, thank you. All the best.